Well, hello there and welcome to Trent Vineyard. My name's John, I'm here with Susie. Um, and as you can see, we're here at the warehouse and it's just us, the, the crew are here. And we're also got John and Debbie here. Hello. Hi guys. Hi. Oh, it's so nice to all be together. And welcome to you at home, wherever you're watching from today, especially if this is the first time you've ever tuned in. You've chosen a great week to join us. Yeah, you have, because you've actually walked into or clicked into a celebration because today we are celebrating our 24th birthday as a church. Yeah, happy birthday! <laughs> <Woo! laughs> Susie, what are you doing? Well, I just went for it because I We're just wanted to, to enjoy be the moment. Synchronized. John and Debbie have got one, so all right then. Have we got a have we got a spare? Can we? Okay. Oh, let me shake the cap. <laughs> All right, yeah, good, good catch. So, what okay. are we doing? So, we're going to do it on the count of three. All right. So, is that like a one, two, three, bang, or is that a one, two, bang? No, one, two, three, bang. All oh, right, one, two, three, bang. One, okay. two, three, bang, and I'm aiming at you guys. Okay, right, ready, and you twist. Okay, right, ready, one, two. Three, oh, bang! I've done it the wrong way. Oh, this, oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, it looks good. That. that looks good. So happy birthday! Wow. What a what a fitting um, and dramatic celebration. If it's um, if you want to wish everybody in the church family a happy birthday, type it in the comments. If it is actually your birthday today, then happy birthday to you. Let us know. Absolutely. Let's get it rolling in the comments. And of course, no birthday celebration would be complete um, without a cake. Yeah, and as it's our 24th birthday today, we have sent 24 cakes to 24 of you amazing people. Sue, did you get a cake? Were you one of the 24? Um, no. Were you? No. no <laughs> Imagine if they sent you one and not me, that would have been, that would have been perfect. But we do have all the outdate roses chocolates. At least there is the big tub of outdate roses, so we can have one of those after this. But if you were one of the people who did get a cake, one of the, the 24 chosen uh, people, um, then we would love, if you're up for it, if you, if you send us a photo um, of you with the cake, if you haven't already eaten it, um, pop it on social media on one of our channels and hashtag TV24 and then we can celebrate with you. Yeah, and if you're not following us on social media, why not? Uh, time to join us in September, great time. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you can find us if you just search Trent Vineyard. Everything that's going on is pretty much on there. Brilliant. Okay, so um, we're gonna we're gonna move on with the service now. We've actually got a really good, really good service coming. Yeah, up. we have. Well, it's already been good so far with the <laughs> shenanigans. But um, we're gonna hear from John and some members of the church. Gonna just share what God's done in their lives. Really powerful. But we're gonna pray together. We'll worship. But before we do that, Debbie, you're gonna lead us into worship. Well, 24 years, my head is buzzing with memories. Just so many things to be thankful to the Lord for. The fact that he called us in the first place, the fact that he brought so many people together and so many wonderful things have happened. And I think it would be so fitting to read from Psalm 100. So I'm going to read that and then I'm going to pray as we go into worship. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We're his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Lord, we come with such joyful hearts. We come to worship you with gladness. We come before you with joyful songs. We know, Lord, that you are so good, that you're the one that made us and that we're yours, that we're your people. We here at Trent Vineyard, we are the sheep of your pasture. We enter your gates with just such thankful, wide open hearts, Lord. And we come into your courts with just so much praise and thankfulness. We want to just lift your name up, Lord, for your good and your love just goes on and on and on forever. Your faithfulness has been with us from the very beginning and continues through so many generations. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. King of 
to the foot of your cross Every burden we carry You can lift up So come if you're
there is nothing you can't lift us from. You're all that we need. And you are stronger than anything we face. Christ within us, strength to run this race. You're all that we need. you are beautiful Jesus we love you there's no one like you we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise because you are worthy you are worthy of everything Amen Amen Oh, it's great as ever to worship together. And um, now, um, as, as each week, we've got some announcements that we'd love to, to quickly run through. Yeah, we've got a whole different bunch of web links that we're going to run through. But there's one link, our favourite link, which is trendv.org forward slash links. Everything's there. Uh, so the first thing we want to let you know that's coming up is our online newcomers welcome. If you are new to Trend, if you're thinking about joining us, you'd love to get involved and you're wondering, like, how would I even do that um, if, if, if we're not meeting physically? Um, this event, that's an online event, is the perfect thing to come along to. Um, you'll be able to hear a little bit of John and Debbie's story and it's happening um, next Saturday, the 12th of September. Absolutely. As Bodder says, they'll be telling their story live. They'll be talking about, some of the team will be talking about how you can get stuck in, how you can get involved in groups, in serving, really feeling part of the family. So if that's you, we would love to meet you. And the link is trentv.org forward slash connect should be coming up. Yeah, and that link also, even if you're not able to, to make it on that date, you can use that link to get in touch with us and begin to get, invo get involved. So use that link anyway if you're new and you want to get plugged in. Yeah, and uh, on that link as well, you can also find out about small groups. And uh, some of the small groups took a break over the summer, but we're back and it's September and it's an amazing opportunity. It's the best way to really make friends, get to know each other more now than ever. Join a small group on that link. 
Also, if you're a student watching, um, it's great to have you join us. It might be that you're planning to start university um, this term and you're looking for a church to join, or it might be that you're just heading back up to Nottingham and you've checked us out. It's great to have you with us. And uh, whether you're watching at the 9.15 or the 11.15 today, um, we'd encourage you to, to check out the link below because later today, uh, at 5.45 p.m. there is a student um, Zoom welcome event that's just for you. If you're watching at the 7 p.m. and you missed it, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, well, if you miss it, don't worry because there's so much going on here for students. We love students. I came here as a student, I think it was 17 years ago. Wow. I know. Wow. Absolutely. We it went, looks so. like five, Sue. <laughs> exactly. Um, but that is going to be a great time to just meet the student team, hear what it like, looks like to be a student in Nottingham and keep your eyes peeled on here and on our social media over the next few weeks because we're hoping to be able to gather with you in person as well uh, once term starts. The other thing we wanted to mention before we move on to the next section is uh, giving financially. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're new or visiting uh, today, tuning in with us, there's absolutely no pressure to give in any way. But if you do call Trent home, uh, or you're looking more to more as how you can get involved, then do head to the link below. Yeah, obviously at the moment, because we're not meeting in person, all of the giving is working digitally. Um, and But if you'd like to know how to give online, whether it's a one-off gift or to start a regular um, gift, um, then you can you can follow the link below. And um, if you're checking that out, um, just in this moment, we're gonna, we're gonna pray. Yeah, we are. Holy Spirit, God, we thank you for the amazing, generous God you are. God, thank you that in this season for all the different things we've been able to do. And we just pray for all the money that comes in today, that comes in throughout the week through the bank, that we would use it, give us wisdom, God, to use it so that we might see your name lifted high in this city and beyond. Amen. 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 The final thing from us um, in this section is that we wanted to mention the First Steps course. Yeah, so First Steps is starting a week on Tuesday, so Tuesday, September the 15th. And uh, this course is for you guys who have recently started following Jesus. So it might be that you've come to know Jesus uh, in this season. It might be that you're on the Alpha course and you met Jesus that way. Whatever, we would love you to come along. It's going to be an online course. You'll get to hear some teaching. There'll be time to discuss in groups and make some friends as well. Uh, we think it'll be brilliant for you. There's quite a few people signed up for that as well, I think, at the yeah, moment already. it's going to so be really good. Should be great. Um, so that's everything from us. Now let's hear from John. Happy 24th birthday. As we do each year, we'll have a number of people, members of the church, who'll be sharing their own stories, sharing a bit about what it's been like to be part of this family. Unlike other years, rather than people joining me here on the stage, we've captured those stories in a piece of film, which we'll watch in a few moments. Because this year, or at least the second half of it, has been really unlike any other year. I could not have imagined 12 months ago when we celebrated our 23rd birthday, that this year we will be celebrating it scattered rather than gathered, and you will be joining us here online. What an unusual year it's been, and it's fair to say that moving most of our ministries online has been a really steep learning curve for uh, all of us. For a start, we had to very quickly move and learn how to do Sunday services online now back at the warehouse, but uh, for a long time, recording especially the talks in our own homes. And as I mentioned two weeks ago, while what goes on online may look very organized, what is shown in front of the camera is not always the same as what is going on behind the camera. So this is what you see, and this is what you don't see. In this instance, my desktop pulled at a, an angle so that the window isn't right behind my head. The computer screen draped in black tea towels to reduce glare reflecting in my glasses. And my phone in a clip hanging from a shelf and a mic stand precariously balanced just off camera. Or outside, what you didn't see was the elaborate setup of two tripods, one holding an iPad, another balanced on a table with the phone camera and a kitchen roll tube over the microphone to quieten the wind noise. Oh, and the, the lawn mower's there because the light was beginning to fade and I only had time to mow the half of the lawn which was actually gonna be in the shot. We had to quickly get used to Zoom uh, and on the evening of the 19th of March, I took a picture of our first ever senior leadership team meeting online with everyone smiling for the camera. And we were discussing how we were gonna do church online for that first Sunday in less than three days time. Uh, 
and overcome the numerous challenging obstacles that COVID had thrown at us. And a little while into that meeting, Susie very quietly took another photo, which captures pretty well the mental exhaustion which we were feeling. Going into lockdown was demanding. Being isolated has been difficult and working out how we might begin to meet physically again is even more challenging. I saw this on social media, types of headaches. Some of you might be able to relate to it. While returning to physical church gatherings may not be the cause of your headache, I know that this season has been extremely challenging for many of you. Some of you have been very isolated, living alone or shielding, and it's been a really very lonely experience. For others of you, it's been the exact opposite. You've had to perhaps homeschool your children while trying to work from home in cramped conditions, uh, juggling Zoom calls and childcare and cooking and homework and tearful children who just wanted to see their friends. Or maybe your work has become unstable and your financial situation uncertain. Perhaps you've been concerned about loved ones. You may have lost someone close to you and perhaps not even been able to attend their funeral. You will have experienced disappointment and frustration, having to cancel events and put plans on hold and, and deal with grief and loss in various ways. But despite the challenges we've all faced in this season, there is so much to celebrate. It's been so encouraging how many of you have continued to connect with us here on Sundays and through small groups online. Some of you have joined us in recent months and we are so delighted to have you with us. Many of you have put vast hours into making our ministries able to continue. For example, volunteers in Compassion investing in activities including the distribution of food and other household items to food banks right across the city. Over these months, we've delivered over 30 tonnes of food to help feed those who are in need. Small group leaders had to familiarise themselves with new technologies to ensure that you could keep meeting and supporting each other and sharing life together. Kids and youth ministries have done an amazing job online. And we've seen the largest number of people doing the Alpha course ever, all of it done over Zoom. And we've even managed to do some events like Closer and Bow Down through the medium of technology. We've all had to learn new skills in this season. And Debbie and I are so grateful to every one of you who have invested time and energy and money in enabling the church to continue to thrive despite the obstacles. Although what Trent looks like has changed really over the whole 24 years of its life, and especially in these last six months, the vision that God has given us as a people has not really changed at all. We still want to be a people who worship God, who do the things that Jesus did, care for those in need, live kingdom lives, even in a time like this. Because even as the world around us has changed, even as that looks so, so different right now, church looks very different. The Bible assures us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he's recorded in Matthew 16 saying, I will build my church and essentially nothing will overcome it. In the message translation, I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. That is great news for us. It's his church and he's passionate about it. And he is building it. Nothing which comes against it will succeed. And the church will prevail and advance God's kingdom against every obstacle. So be encouraged that even when it looks like coronavirus is messing with God's plans for his church, he is at work, he is building, he is protecting and energizing his people to thrive. We're now going to hear Takoni, James and Izzy, Brian and Micah 
share a little of their experience of being part of this church. And as you'll see from their stories, the reality is that while we're celebrating the church on this, its birthday, this celebration is about Jesus and God the Father of this family and every other expression of the church across the world who has, out of his extravagant grace, brought us together. And all the glory belongs to him. It's been brilliant to experience that, that love and that community um, being there for us when we, when we really needed them. It's church being what church is meant to be. That, that community that's there for you and cares for you and, and loves you without necessarily needing anything in return. I'm James and this is... Izzy. Um, and we first came to Trent back in 2009. Hello, I'm Anka and um, I've been coming to Trent Vineyard for three years. Hello, my name's Brian. Uh, I'm Tacconi, I'm 16 and I've been at Trent for two years now. <laughs> the, uh, the first week we came to Trent was actually on uh, the week where John goes over all the church finances. Um, and people have said to us, oh gosh, is it your first week? Oh, well, do come back. It isn't always like this. Um, but for us, it was the perfect week to be there because we were so touched and so impressed with seeing what the church did with all of its resources, with all of its people, with all of its money. Uh, and in particular, the idea of, of giving 22% of everything that comes in through the door goes straight back out to help people. Um, just really impressed us and really touched us and we immediately knew this was the church for us this was the the home that we wanted to be involved in so uh, we've been here at Trent ever since. I first came to Trent Vineyard um, as a student when I was a fresher I had met a really good friend in halls and she took me down for breakfast one day we sat down at the table and I overheard somebody talking about church and um, I was like oh I'm a Christian too and I'm looking for a church and seven of us on the table went, oh, we're all Christians and looking for a church. So a couple of my friends had come to Trent Vineyard before, so I decided to come with them. And the second I walked in, I was like, ah, oh, this is it, this is good. Uh, the first time I came to Trent was around summertime two years ago, and I just loved the environment we came to, and the, especially in youth where we see there's so many young people just getting involved and enjoying, enjoying being there and just thoroughly enjoying the presence of God in the place. I first come to Trent Vineyard when I met my neighbours Lizzie and Stephen when my brother my brother died of cancer and he'd all, I told Stephen that he died and uh, Stephen suggested that I come to the church which I done and uh, about a week or two went by and he said to me there's a, a thing called the, um, the Alpha course for eight weeks, so I come for that. First few weeks wasn't too bad, but after that I sort of got into it like a bit more like, and I started to like the people and the, the pit thing on the screen and everything. So I'm from like a really small village church at home, and so we do family really well. And um, coming into Trent Vineyard, it's quite big, it could be quite overwhelming, but actually just meeting people and people remembering you and who you are um, and just taking the effort to get to know you in a real way really made it feel like home and like family. Um, so yeah, my parents came up to Trent Vineyard, um, well, they came up to Nottingham to visit me and I was really excited to bring them to church and brought them in. And um, yeah, somebody from the welcome team kind of started chatting to them. And I went off on my own to get a donut and, and say hello to some people. And I came back and he knew so many weird, random things about my parents. And it was incredible. And um, yeah, they went home. And then a few months later, they came back up to visit me again. And they bumped into the same guy from the welcome team. And he remembered everything. Like he remembered all of the random little silly things that people don't usually remember. And I remember my mum and dad were really struck by how special it was that he he not only remembered their faces and their names, but all of the things that they talked about. With the table, what we was on, like, it was a terrific table in the end. They were all nice people and they're all like, um, shall we meet up for coffee and all. Well, I never done any of that before, the, all that coffee game and, you know, hugging and kissing and all that. I'm, I'm not into all that game, like, you know, and, uh, but I, did, I was into it at the end. <laughs> yeah, so coming to Trent, I've met some amazing people. 
um, like some all over from different age groups and different different ranges. But for example, Danny is a couple years older than me, but probably one of the best friends I've made over my period here. And having someone older than me, being able to learn from them and being able to use his experiences to better me. And then in my small group, there's a guy called Matt, and I think that he's one of the most interesting people I've met. He's very well spoken and he's very talented. I think yeah, he's very inspirational to other people. And overall, there's loads of different people I've met whilst being here that have probably made some of the best friends I have now. And then when as we was going through, like we was um, someone mentioned the arches, and so I said, "What what was that about?" Like and. They said it's more of the charity side of the church. And I said, well, I'll give it a go. I'll go, like, and if everything's all right, I'll let you know as if I'm going to go every week or not. And of course, every, when I got in there, I met all the people and they were terrific, really terrific. Like, they all treated me with respect and, you know, all had a laugh and a joke and it really made me feel at home. And I thought, well, that's, this is me, like, I don't want, you know, I'm going to have some of this, like. Um, well, so lockdown has been uh, interesting for us, as it has been for a lot of people. Uh, back in March, I got a phone call from the doctor to say that um, because of our son's underlying medical conditions, uh, we were going to have to shield. Uh, anyone who knows our son, he doesn't appear to have underlying medical conditions. He runs around and is crazy like everyone else, but uh, he's kept healthy by being on a huge array of medication and stuff constantly. And that puts him in the vulnerable group. The only problem was is uh, there were supposed to be letters and lists and things like that so that you could get food deliveries so we would be able to get the things that we needed. Um, but out in Grantham there was a bit of a mistake with the lists, the letters never arrived, everything wasn't really sorted out, no one was really prepared for this. Um, and so we weren't able to get any food uh, and we were rapidly running out of food and we were down to our last, uh, our last can of, of kidney beans we, yeah yeah, uh, yeah so the we sort of, the options were, were getting very very limited um, and so we started up small groups on zoom uh, and we just mentioned as a point for prayer not really asking for anything just sort of saying look could people pray that these lists get sorted out because we are down to our last can of kidney beans and we're not sure what we're going to feed the kids tomorrow um, and what was amazing the, the group just fell over themselves to offer to help uh, and not just help that night but commit to bring us whatever we needed uh, moving forward we were finding almost on a daily basis, people in the small group were saying, right, I'm going shopping. What can I get you? What do you need? And we were kind of having to sort of message back and going, actually, you know, someone else has already got something for us. We're, we're, we're fine, thanks. But then they'd get us things anyway. So we were getting presents dropped off for us. Um, even um, one day there was a, I got a text message saying I've left something at your door and it was a, it was a date night kit. And someone had dropped us off, you know, nice food for us to have in the evening and a bottle of wine and really thoughtful stuff like that. Yeah, my phone, like, when I, when I had, um, I had three numbers on my phone, like, I had my brother, my doctor, and Asta for paying the money, you know, because it's pay as you go phone, like. And I only had the three numbers on there, and I think I've got about 18 numbers on there, 17 or 18 numbers now. And that just goes to prove that these people are not fake. They're, they're there for real. They're real people, and they ring me every it's like it's one will ring me in the morning and one will ring me in the afternoon then another one at night it's like I'm bowling along right and I don't have to worry about anything because I know that someone's going to phone me and I'm going to say yeah I'm alright and everything's lovely so I'm, I'm really pleased honest to God I am I can't, I can't say how pleased I am I'd, I'd say one word to describe Trent Youth would be raucous um, you everything's all over the place one minute you can really be connecting emotionally to one another and the next minute it's just controlled chaos which i love the most about it so yeah some of the funniest things that have happened at trent and all the most of them have been caught on camera but one comes to mind is when i uh, on our way to source fiber watford uh, we stopped off at top golf uh, so we're playing mini golf and i've gone in to reach a ball out the pond and i've slipped and like the water's come out knee height like and my feet are just soaked. I've had to borrow someone else's socks, and it was it was it was hysterics everywhere. But it's probably one of the funniest moments. Yeah. So I'm on some teams in Trentman Yard. I am part of the student leaders team and lead a small group with the student leaders, and I'm on the youth team. And yeah, it's just 
been incredible having groups of people and they are extremely like families. You have your crazy uncles and weird big sisters and people who come alongside you and we eat together and we, you know, we do the serving together, but we also encourage, challenge one another, chat about Jesus, the Bible. I think it has been that expression of family, um, as um, James mentioned, um, in terms of what the small group have been doing for us during lockdown. Um, you know, you don't really want to be having to rely on people all the time, but actually we haven't really had any um, any choice. That's sort of been taken out of our hands and the small group have been so lovely and so helpful. And, you know, there's not been any feeling of putting on people. Actually, it's just been their expression of love for us as well. Um, and as often happens when, when we're in Trent, you know, the, the leadership will often say, you know, the way to get to know people um, is to join a small group. The way to feel kind of involved and included in the life of Trent is to join a team or join a small group. And I think we've really felt that over this time. I mean, we had a lovely small group before, um, but I think over this time, particularly, the small groups really pulled together. Last year at Seoul, um, we were, I think it was third or fourth, third or fourth night and everyone was everyone was apart most most lunch we just sort ourselves out but one day we decided that we all gather together get some money together and then just buy some pizza for everyone all, all our youth group and then me and Liv someone else has gone in James, James's car and come out with just like 10 20 boxes of pizza and everyone's just looking at us just carrying it just walking straight through everyone it was it was a funny experience yeah yeah, so I feel like I've really encountered the Holy Spirit in Trent. Um, my first time in Trent Vineyard, I, we were in worship and I remember it was Bernie was on the stage and just was really experiencing the Holy Spirit. She was on her knees, she was sobbing and weeping and it was beautiful and messy and I felt really, I think it was really special to see like you can do all that stuff, you can do the beautiful and messy and you can do it in front of everyone. Um, yeah, it was really wonderful to me um, to be able to see that and see a church that does that so well. And um, yeah, I, I also, I guess, have really experienced the gentleness of Jesus. And yes, the Holy Spirit meets us in those big and like it, it really impactful moments, but also just that quiet voice, that gentleness. Um, when I was in uni, my grandfather passed away and obviously it was quite sad and feeling loads of different feelings and was quite apprehensive about coming to church on Sunday. I, I thought, you know, I don't think I'm ready for the, the messy sobbing and all of that. But my friends kind of encouraged me and brought me along. And I just remember Jesus meeting with me in a really gentle way, um, just reminding me of his love, of his grace, how how yeah, he was just there. Um, and it was probably just one of the most impactful encounters with the Holy Spirit of my life. When you, when it kicks off like big time, when the, when the singing starts, it, I had to put my thumb in my mouth because I thought I'm getting overwhelmed with it all. Like, and like the build up of it and everything. And then when they said, shall we put, hold our hands out and tell Jesus, not tell him like but ask him to come like. I really thought he was in that room, honest to God I did. I, I, I said to myself, there's something happening here that's not quite how it was when I walked in the door. I thought, I, I, I kept putting my thumb in my mouth because not to, not, how can I put like, not cry like. But I thought I was going to cry, I really did. And then all of a sudden it seemed to get calmer. Something seemed to, I don't know what it was. You know, the, the singing had stopped and then the praying started. And then I thought, well, there's something to this. There's more to this than meets the eye in the sense that one minute I was feeling all like I wanted to get out of the place. And the next minute I felt that I didn't want to leave the place. I said, I'll be back here. I'll, I will come back. Because it was that sort of feeling and that sort of place. I'd say coming to Trent, my relationship with Jesus has definitely deepened and I've been able to connect with other people on a more personal level. 
and it's not been just about me and Jesus, it's been more about being able to connect with one another and the sense of community and family that's been developed here. I think coming to Trent, I've been offered some of the most incredible opportunities I didn't think I'd be doing two years ago. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I got to speak a little bit for a few minutes about my thoughts on the DTI youth takeover. And I think that coming here has been just a great opportunity for me, just to grow the person and become more of, a, more of the person that I'm meant to be. So yeah, I think my relationship with Jesus has changed quite a lot since first coming to Trent. At my home church, my mum is a leader and a pastor. So growing up, I was like the pastor's kid. Um, and I knew Jesus, but I knew about him. I knew about him through my mum and through being in church all the time, but I didn't have my own relationship with him. And definitely in that first couple of weeks of being in Trent Vineyard, just something changed and just felt, yeah, like I really loved Jesus and I'd, I'd do anything for him. I love him so much. And yeah, I have ownership of my faith now and I know God and I know that he knows me. And yeah, I think in the past I had done church on Sundays and then during the week, like at small groups or when things were on. Um, but yeah, being at church and having people come alongside me and just remind me that it's for every day. And now I do every single day with Jesus. And yeah, it's really changed my life. It's been brilliant to experience that, that love and that community. Um, being there for us when we when we really needed them it's church being what church is meant to be that that community that's there for you and cares for you and, and loves you without necessarily needing anything in return and i went and i, I and it was just as easy as that really I, I keep thinking like it could have been a yes or a no and i i said yes and i'm really pleased that i did say yes because i would have missed that on all this all the people all like you know, the arches, you know, it's a terrific place, I do, I really think it is. Well, those are amazing and incredibly moving stories. And so join me and we'll pray. And then we're going to just ask the Lord to minister to us and we'll uh, see if there's some words of knowledge. As always, there's people uh, waiting to minister to those of you who would like to, to do that. So Lord, we just want to thank you. Our hearts are bursting with thankfulness for who you are and, and what you've done and, and for the lives of these folks who've shared these stories, what you've done in their lives and what that represents for so many of us in the life of Trent Vineyard. Lord, we thank you that you have a plan for every one of us, that you, you see the big picture, but you also see individuals, you see unique uh, people with unique stories, with unique callings. And we thank you, Lord, that you've established us to be good news in this city that Lord, you have much more for us to do as we move forward and we just give you all the glory. It's all about you, Jesus, all about you. We lift your name. We magnify you, Lord. We're so thankful. Amen. Amen. You know, let's just wait on the Holy Spirit for, for a few moments. Holy Spirit, we, we just invite you to come. Wherever you are, whether you're in the kitchen or the sitting room or your bedroom, sitting down or standing up, just open yourselves up to the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. I just sense the Lord wanting to empower us as we move forward to the next chapter. We don't know what the future holds, but the Lord does. And so, Holy Spirit, we welcome your empowering for the season ahead, for all that we're facing. Some of you as parents, um, you know, this is a, a new season, children getting back into school and, and um, re-engaging with uh, kind of the outside world in, in new ways. And, and Lord, we ask for empowering to be witnesses, to be good news, to be bringers of peace. 
and for some of you just in difficulty and turmoil, um, the Holy Spirit comes close to you right now to comfort and to empower you for what you have to deal with. I just have a sense that there are some of you who, you know, everything seemed to be going well and yet in this last few weeks, uh, the cracks have really begun to show. There are new stresses and strains, there are financial concerns, there are relational um, situations that are breaking down. And you need some prayer this morning. I, I just sense there's somebody called Mary and um, there's something that's related to a breakdown of trust and the Lord is just encouraging you to reach out to him. Do you have any words, John, as we're just... Yeah, I'm just sensing a couple of things. One is that uh, somebody has a problem with, it's your right ear. Uh, the word cochlea came to mind there. I believe that's part of the inner ear. Uh, I believe you may be a woman, but there's some problem there that you'd know if it was you. Someone else uh, with a problem in their right hip, you feel it semi comes out of joint sometimes as you're walking and gives you quite a bit of jip. So your right hip, and then also a sense of the left eye uh, twitching. Um, comes and goes a bit, I think, but you're very aware of your left eye twitching. And also, I, I just sense that there are some of you as parents, you're quite nervous about your um, children starting university, leaving home in this particular season, what would have been an exciting time. Uh, you don't want to necessarily express it to your child, but you, are, you have concerns. And again, we'd, we'd love to pray with you. And so, Lord, you know, right now, for these different situations, some of these physical conditions, if, you, if that's you, you know, put your hand on that part of your body, be it, be it your hip or your eye or ear, or if there's someone with you, they might want to lay hands on you. And so we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence. We, we command healing to these conditions. We, we command freedom from pain and the symptoms uh, that these uh, folks are experiencing, the negative symptoms that would um, alert them to the fact there's something wrong in these parts of their body. And so we, we just command healing throughout these bodies. So I'm really encouraging you to um, press. If you're watching on the Church Online, just click on the live prayer button. Yeah. And also it may be, you just heard Brian talk about him saying yes to Jesus. And it may be that for you today, if you've not yet said yes, to Jesus and signing up to follow him for the rest of your life. You might like to do that. And if you click on the little raised hand button that you see on the Church Online platform, click on that and then go through, have someone pray for you today. God bless you. Bless you all. And so if you've clicked on that live button and someone's praying with you, then uh, you can catch this up later on YouTube. But we're just gonna share a few closing announcements now. Yeah, so um, if you um, have recently said yes to Jesus, if you've recently made a decision to follow him, um, and it might be that you did that just a few seconds ago by, by digitally raising your hand, um, then we really would encourage you to you also click through. Um, there's an option to, to join somebody in prayer online. Um, it might be actually that in that moment you didn't do that, but you do still feel um, as you reflect, yes, I wanna give my yes to Jesus. I wanna commit my life to following him. And if that's you, you can do that now. And as I say, we would really um, recommend that you let us know if you've done that, joining us in the prayer chat room. And the reason is that we'd love to pray for you. We'd love to, to, to share that moment with you because it's an amazing moment. You've just made an amazing decision. And also we've got some resources that we'd love to, to share with you that we think you might find really useful as you begin that journey of, of following Jesus. Um, and we'd love to help you get plugged in as well. Yeah, and we've got two more links for you, Changing Lives and Why Jesus. Changing Lives is stories of people who came along to this church. They met and encountered the person of Jesus and their life totally changed. That's why it's called Changing Lives. And also Why Jesus, that's a real short explanation of who Jesus is, what the Christian faith is all about. So if you're exploring faith, those two things are definite links for you. Sounds great. So I think that's everything um, from us in terms of announcement. Um, just one more thing before we go. You can find all of the links that we've mentioned throughout the service at Susie's one favourite link, which is? It's trentv.org forward slash links. Brilliant. Um, so that's everything for the service today. And we hope you have um, a blessed week. We love you and thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And happy birthday again, Trent Vineyard. Happy 24th birthday. Join us again next week. We'll be here as we're going to be wrapping up that sermon series, Living a Fruitful Life. We love you and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.